Hello and thank you for joining. Today's session is covering modernizing file sharing with Google Drive for work. I'll address how G Suite, which is formerly Google Apps for Work, how they tackles enterprise file sync and sharing as a solution and discuss Profound Cloud's proven best practice in successfully developing Google Drive for an organization uh, from an IT administrative perspective. First of all, questions. I'll try to save some time for questions at the end, but we'll be certain to contact you directly should I not have time to respond. If you take a look at the link above, uh, right here, you'll see goo.gl slash slides uh, slash 3zec6a. Uh, if you click on that link or if you type that URL in, it'll take you to a prompt where you can ask questions. Uh, lastly, this session will be recorded and I'll be certain to share it with you, uh, so you so you can share it with your team or other colleagues that might find this information relevant. So let's get started. Now how often do you hear this? I know I catch myself saying it constantly. I might even go as far as saying I rely on my mobile device and tablet to do my job. For those of you who are currently using Google Apps, we have found, believe it or not, that this, these three items, right, these three applications right here, is what most of us think of when we're talking about using the G Suite. And, well, maybe these two. But email, contacts, and calendar are the primary work tools that most people utilize on their iPhones, Androids, and even some Blackberries. I do agree they serve well for quick communication, but question if it's sufficient. With so much accessibility on other, more personal data points in mail, is mail, calendar, and contacts enough? So here we are. This is what our coffee breaks, lunches, and work travel look like, right? The gentleman with the laptop likely has the most functionality out of uh, the four of these people. But why, though? Why should they? Why should the combination of your personal device and enterprise operating system from a mobile device perspective be limited to mail, calendars, and contacts? What about your documents, presentations, images, videos, you know, the actual content that is pertinent to your organization's success? People are trying to work harder, smarter, and more efficient, but are being stonewalled by outdated technology. Within the 2016 Magic Quadrant Report for Enterprise File Synchronization and Sharing, Gardner outlined a survey of over 2,000 respondents they did in 2015 and it was talking about the state of the digital workforce. Unsurprisingly, they found that 75% of digital workers use cloud file storage and sharing tools for their work activities, and 25% of them use these services every single day. Mobile is key to enterprise file synchronization and sharing. This type of accessibility, though, is yearned by organizations, which is why most are using tens of cloud storage apps and hundreds of collaboration apps. Uh, SkyHigh, a company in the cloud security space, recently released an analysis based on 350 mid to large businesses that illustrates this phenomenon as well. Everyone is aware of shadow IT for file sharing, but collaboration is an even bigger category. And to be honest, sometimes when you're looking at file synchronization and sharing tools and collaboration tools, I think there's a bit of a gray area between how they are distincted, which is why it's important to put both into the same category when evaluating tools. The average mid to large uh, business uses about 125 collaboration apps. This is including GoToMeeting, uh, Evernote, Prezi, Skype, Google Apps, G Suite, if you will, and versus 35 different, uh, 37 different file sharing apps. Further, the Gartner report from earlier noted that 35% of respondents said that they, says that they use unsanctioned tools daily. This isn't surprising because people want to do a lot more than just access and share files. They want to connect, share ideas, and create together at work and just like they do they, when they're at home and as do the, on their, per, their personal lives. So Google's dr Google Drive, right, or G Suite's Drive, if you will, works on any device, is a, a, available anytime, and you can work with any team, whether they're in the organization or outside. And I invite you to think beyond the perceived limitations of mobility, which was the calendar, contacts, and mail exclusively, and consider some of the standard best practices while of file synchronization and sharing as well. So let's first talk about the value of G Suite. 
So G Suite, or formerly Google Apps, let's just call it Google Apps right now because that's probably the more familiar term. Recently, Google changed the name of Google Apps to G Suite, um, and I'll be addressing that in a different webinar. So I'll mix between Google Apps and G Suite just so I don't confuse anyone that's on the, on the, uh, the uh, session here. Okay, so let's not discount the importance of apps as a platform. It, it delivers the core of what we do and is the basis for our authentication. You can access your work on any device, hold video conferences on your iPhone, Android, tablet, or laptop. And one of my favorite use cases is when I need to jump on my bus or train to get home, I can still open up a presentation or proposal I'm working on, regardless if I'm connected uh, to the internet or not, and continue to work and uh, with my colleagues. When I am connected, I can actually see in real time what edits they're making. And then when I'm offline, it will store everything that I'm working on on any of those devices. And then once it's back up, it will resync. Very helpful. When I'm on a conference call or discussing project scope with a client, I can easily message or email them a link to a live document, such as the one I'm showing you right now. There's no need to send an attachment where you can collaborate in real time through Google Docs, Slides, or Sheets, and even share your screen while holding a Google Hangout. If someone sends me a non-Google file, such as a PDF, Word, or other Office file, I can avoid the hassle of actually downloading and, and simply drop the file into my organization's folder structure directly from Gmail or my mobile device using the Gmail app. And this is one of my favorite features because without actually having Microsoft Office, I can view and edit Microsoft Office files. Uh, further, Google actually lets you set sharing permissions to expire. And this is extremely handy when working with clients outside your organization. I could say, hey, take a look at this document, but I might not want that person to have that file indefinitely, so I can put a, a couple of day timer on there and bada bing, it does it for me automatically. And like I said, this is um, what people, when they send out, I, I, there are still people that are sending copies out, right? Which is the, one of the biggest frustrations I used to have when or using a different platform was I would just have so many copies of the same file. Um, someone would send me an attachment and they said, please revise this, and then I would update it, and then I'd real find out that two other people received a copy too, and then which is the more recent copy, who made what edits, and it became very uh, frustrating. So. Google has eliminated this, right? And Microsoft, to their point, too, has also done the same thing. I just still really believe that Google is ahead of the curve with this because it, it's extremely seamless and doesn't force you between web and on-premise. You just you stay in one platform within the web browser and you can make these edits in real time. And it has version control built right in, revision history, suggested edits, et cetera, for redlining, and it's very, very helpful. And like I said, this is what it looks like when I'm mobile and working on a project plan with my colleagues and they're working from the office, et cetera. This is the type of collaboration that really forever makes the magic really happen here with G Suite. So with G Suite Business, which was formerly Google Apps for Work Unlimited, to clarify, there really there aren't any storage limits any, any longer to slow you down because unlimited email and file storage, right? That means no more routine mailbox cleaning, no more purging of your old PST files, no more alerts in your, in your inbox or file server or my docs is full. And unlimited storage means no more managing quotas ever. So Drive supports multi-terabyte files and is available in over 70 languages. Drive is built on Google's globally optimized data center network, so performance and availability are world class, with, with, um, and they're also pretty green too, which is quite nice. Um, in addition to being available, the data also needs to be secure, right? This is a very big question here. And I would argue that Google, of all the internet-based providers, takes this the most seriously. They really do. They have over 400 security engineers working full-time to protect um, their systems and their users, right? So Drive includes, and they also want to be transparent to you in terms of what information is being accessed, how, etc. So that's why they give you audit reports that let you track all user activities and security controls so you can customize Drive for your organization's needs. Data in Drive is encrypted at rest and in transit and mobile security is built in. Drive gives you company-wide file search, and over the course, um, and, and there's also, uh, I'm trying to rephrase that, there's actually, uh, they have e-discovery tools as well. So if you're looking for 
let's say you get into litigation or something of that nature, um, the e-discovery tool, Google Vault, will allow you to present the information from that has been sent to received for all um, within the organization, very helpful for lawyers if and when or, you know, hopefully not, you ever encounter some type of litigation that is necessary. You can place litigation hold, do those searches, and really do a nice export of that drive content, mail content, etc. And they're really, they're always coming up with new ways to detect security threats. Uh, more, I think recently they, they released the suspicious lock and detection, which is extremely helpful. If Google says, hey, this doesn't look right, for example, if there's someone that logged in from either a different state or country, um, and it's an unusual place that you haven't visited before, you'll get a notification that says, oh, something doesn't look right, then make a recommendation to reset your password right away, clear all uh, uh locations that are currently accessing and which is pretty great. That's also available on the, the free version as well. That's nice to know. So Drive for Work is very easy to manage, right? You have a centralized admin panel and a very convenient management tools that are available to you. It integrates with your existing authentication systems and also with Drive's reporting features with Vault, it's very easy to visualize uh, usage, sharing trends, and compliance. So. I invite you to consider looking beyond the limitations of your operating systems in place and enabling your growing mobile workforce to be more productive and efficient while increasing revenue. So let's try to give a more specific use case of utilizing this technology. Imagine that an audio-visual tech for a hotel conference center needs to set up Wi-Fi to a room before a speaker is supposed to deliver a presentation. Everything is set up. But in order to establish a connection, he must confirm the setup is completed back at his main office. More so, the tech, thinking he was doing a good job, offered to edit the presentation for the hotel after noticing an outdated logo. Regardless, uh, the tech needs to communicate with the local tech office to either switch on services or at the very least troubleshoot why it's not working. This requires multiple pieces of information and proof of setup. In most cases, and you can expand this to uh, any type of field technician work that is required for your organization or any type of mobile communication. When someone is on the road and they need information, um, how do they get that information quickly and easily and seamlessly so they don't have to travel all the way back? Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Let's look at how differently this could have gone with using um, Google, for example. So. As, a t as the tech was setting up the room, um, he or she could have been entering the configuration or work related to data, the data in a Google form. And thanks to uh, a G Suite script, the data is recorded into the system and accessible as needed. The script also has a time-based trigger to notify the office the setup was not, marked com uh, was not marked complete. And instantly, via Hangouts, the office communicates with the tech rather than the tech waiting for the office to be available. Together, they can troubleshoot, utilize the camera, see all the data, share files directly uh, from using URLs and opening in Google Drive, and getting the presentation ready. And the tech can even edit the presentation in two minutes and uh, before the service was turned on and giving people enough uh, time to really get done what they needed to. So what's the business benefit, right? Well, Google Drive was able to reduce dramatically the time spent setting up services and increasing jobs completed per day. There is a more con a positive consumer reactions and ability to streamline workflows. This could also assist in predicting more realistic times for installations. And then services initiated faster and via sheets is, um, is market, marked and, and recorded as complete. So consider Drive to manage your operations, deliver access to find support, and give unfettered access to your documents. Another opportunity here is, let's say there was a diagram that was missing or someone brought the wrong information with them. Using the same technology we just described by simply sharing a link, you now would have access to the exact diagram you needed and through Hangouts, you could even screen share, show the diagram, circle the specific point that needed work, etc. Pretty compelling and very, very easy to, to access, which is great. So here are some of the familiar icons we that you might know. And here's how we see when uh, thinking of G Suite and what the endless opportunities are. We see an enterprise-ready engine constantly churning out iteration after iteration of incredible power. And it's placed in your hands. So here are the many opportunities, right? But today's session, 
is going to be focused on modernizing your organization with our proven Google Drive implementation plan. More so, from an administrative standpoint, let's talk about how living this dream uh, is a re becomes a reality with syncing files and sharing for your organization. So for anyone who is fortunate enough to be tasked with managing a file server, these items should all look very familiar to you. Patching. Redundancy and replication across multiple sites, storage arrays and keeping those updated and maintained, and typically one of the larger pain points, and also providing VPN remote access. So what is this dream, right? Well, here it is. The dream is to shut down that file server and move all of your data to, to Google Drive. Just to shut it down, set it on fire, give it a good kick, right, and then recycle after the fact. So. Ideally, you'd be focusing less on hardware and more on improving productivity within the organization. And that really is the core of what Google is trying to do with uh, Drive. So there are some issues, though, at least with Google Drive out of the box, right? So Google Drive says that you should share information among small teams. You should search, not browse or sort. And also suggests that we should let our users manage their own sharing. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense if you think of if Google themselves as a company and their methodologies within the workplace. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that's how your organization works. But what Drive says and what IT managers want are two very different concepts. What we want uh, is a, I'm sorry, what we see is more commonly that IT managers want to control and monitor permissions centrally. They may say that's how it is, has to be, and will be for the foreseeable future. Additionally, I've been in board meetings where the suggestion of user-based management was not taken well. Um, and let's face it, sometimes you just need to browse instead of search. And you know what, it's, it really should be a capability that's accessible to you. So at Profound Cloud, we were faced with a conundrum. We have this incredible platform with Google Drive and also some tried and true methodologies of file organization that we rely on. Google Drive was trying to tell us to do something different than we were before. So our challenge was to come up with a list of best practices to marry the more traditional IT concepts with Google Drive and really make it more feasible to adopt Google Drive across the organization. Ideally, we'd eliminate the reliance of a file server infrastructure altogether. We've had great success with our own company and for many, many organizations that we work with that have adopted this program. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about folder structures and naming conventions and how we suggest we do them a little differently. We'll talk about managing permissions and specifically using role-based permissions to enable an administration-minded folder structure rather than a free-for-all. We'll talk about how to implement a root folder and what that is, and we'll also cover some odds and ends, of ra or rather some thoughts that help further shape the concept of using Drive as a file share. The first item that I want to talk about is the root folder. This is where it all begins. We live by the motto of one folder to rule them all. And what that means is instead of having a bunch of shared folders that are scattered across an organization, think about having one root folder. This is exactly what you would have done on your traditional file server. You likely have a particular hard drive uh, with, that has shared data on it. Let's call it the F drive. And inside your F drive, you have all of your shares, which you can manage in one place. Well, let's think about doing something similar in Google Drive. Here's the guidelines for a root folder. A root folder should be owned by a non-human admin account. I get questions a lot about what does that mean, non-human admin account? What it means is that you have a license, a Google, a Google Apps license, and that license is, is, is uh, not owned or by someone who is, uh, that has a specific name to them. It's not Jason's uh, license, it's not Susan's license, it's not Fred's license, etc. What it is is a uh, it is a license that is applied to only serve as whoever is in the uh, has the permissions to be an IT leader, etc. Would be the one that would own that. And so, if there's turnover, if there's change, things like, things happen, it's okay. That person, uh, whoever is in that role at the time, will have the permissions to manage and monitor that. Okay. And this is going back to general IT best practices, but it's something that gets a little overlooked when focusing on the newness or work involved when deploying G Suite across the domain. 
So the idea is you want to separate the super user accounts from the day-to-day -day work. Also, you want to set up the root folder so that everyone in the organization can view it. Remember though, under the umbrella of this root folder, a particular individual will only be able to view the folders they have access to. This is unlike traditional Windows Server and we can address that later. Also, we want to set the root folder so that only the owner or this non-human admin account, which I mentioned earlier, can edit. So to refrain, I'm sorry, to repeat, people within the organization will have view access, but only that non-human admin account will have edit access of this root folder. And similarly, uh, you do want to set it up so that only that admin can change permissions too. So just like the person, uh, the, the non-human admin account can make edits, that same account is the only one that can actually change permissions as well. So here's something that's interesting too. In Drive, the world is flat. This is something that actually that my uh, CEO, Michael Spadaro, came up with that I found really revealing and relevant to this presentation. And let's look at what it means. So there are two different potential file hier hierarchies that exist. The first, as you see in the image, is a traditional file server. So think of it as a file server that's located on, on premise, it's in a machine, and we have an architecture that's designed around it. So let's call it a deeper file structure where you have more nesting and more subfolders. This works extremely well for a browser mentality in that when you're browsing, you can naturally move from one topic to the next. Well, Google Drive is a little different. <clears throat> it's search-based, so we actually recommend a flatter folder structure. This is obviously a simplified example, and every organization is going to be a little different in how they adopt this concept. And there's different degrees to the level of flatness or deepness when it relates to your organization's file structure. But, in, but the general takeaway to this is to think about a flatter folder structure. If you, have a back, if you have a background in traditional IT file structure, you've probably already um, heard of this theory, um, but we just really want to refrain, uh, continue to reference it so that it's very clear that when you're looking at Google Drive versus a traditional file server, it is really more focused on search than that following the tree, the path, etc. Okay? So let me give you a more reason for considering this flat folder structure. If you think about a search-based environment, let's look at two folders, right? Sales reports and marketing reports. And a flat structure, if I search for the word reports, I'm going to see the folder names. I'm not going to see the paths in Google Drive. If I think about what that would look like if I had a deep structure, my search results would get me reports and reports. This is because they'd be subfolders of sales and marketing. So by flattening that folder structure in one level, what's been done is it allows for users to search more effectively and find full, a full, the folder that they're actually looking for. Remember, if they're searching on a Mac or PC, they're going to be able to search and see relative paths. But this is not the same in Drive. There is a navigation bar, to be very fair. But when you're searching, you're not going to get that navigation bar. You're just going to get the search results. So Drive just gives you the name. With that being said, the name of a folder is now extremely important when designing a Drive folder structure for your organization. And this is one of the key reasons we recommend a flatter folder structure. When you combine that with the fact that there's a lot of truth to search, and don't browse when it comes to Google Drive. And we're no longer concerned about giving the user the easiest browser experience, but rather a completely optimized search experience instead. Very similarly, the, the same way you would want to provide SEO for your website, you want your search engine optimization for Google Drive to happen too. That's, that's an obscure example, but I hopefully you kind of get the point there. So this continues with file names too. In a traditional file server, you'd have a hierarchy with a folder called client XYZ, subfolder proposals. And then inside of that, G Suite and user support, right? Or Google Apps and user support, if you, as you see in the image. Right, uh, So now if I'm browsing to that, I understand that Google Apps and User Support proposal, okay, I get and, uh, and understand that it's for client XYZ because I browse through the hierarchy. But if I search and I get Google Apps and User Support, that really doesn't mean anything to me because I don't know what client it's attached to. There could be hundreds of results depending on how many clients I have, right? 
So with that being said, you need to apply the same methodology of your, to your files as you would with folders in Google's flat environment. So when you search for client XYZ, you'll immediately find the end user support proposal. Again, traditionally, IT admins like descriptive file names, but not lengthy file names. In Google Drive, it's a necessity to be as descriptive and lengthy as needed for the best SEO-like results. Now, I'm going to briefly cover role-based permissions, in which many of you are likely familiar with. However, it's still a little different in, in using Google because it requires you to do some interesting configuration within the admin panel. Role-based permissions has been part of IT best practices for a long time. But what we see, since Google Drive tends to lend itself to this sort of ad hoc as needed sharing method, uh, which can work with a very small team, but we see a lot of customers just sharing to individuals on an as needed basis. And so it looks like this image, right? Phyllis, Sally, Wendy, and Jim all have access to this folder and they can do whatever they please. What we recommend is as follows. Set up role groups. These are groups in the admin panel specifically for administrating Drive and making sure that they have access to the things they're supposed to have access to. Maybe Phyllis and Sally are members of the sales group and Wendy and Jim are members of the marketing group. What's important here is using groups that are specifically designed for Google Drive. We do not recommend using your basic email distribution groups that you might use for G email purposes. Um, and this is why, specifically why, when naming, we give it the name role. We literally have the word role next to it. So there's a clear distinction in the admin panel between your role groups and, for Drive versus your distribution lists for groups in Gmail. Another consideration is to ensure these groups are restricted so they won't be used as email distribution lists. So once you do away with the single user permissions and enable the role-based permissions, you'll end up with a dramatically cleaner permissions list. You have the drive admin who will be owning this folder and permissions given to the specific role groups. Other things to keep in mind. Using role-based permissions makes, it, makes for a significantly faster employee onboarding and offboarding process. So when Sally comes aboard, we don't need to think about the 17 to 13 folders she needs to have access to. We just need to understand the role that she plays. Keeping a cleaner permissions list is also significantly easier to manage. The last thing you want to see is a 60 line item permissions list with various users spread across, which makes it nearly impossible to test, analyze, or report on. And as discussed, using restricted uh, Google Apps groups is the best practice we highly recommend to make the above much easier. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the topic of thinking beyond Gmail and taking full advantage of the enterprise capabilities Google provides, all of this work for file structure seamlessly increases efficiency in other business processes and is why taking the time to discuss and strategize how you can optimize Drive for your business is so critical. So just to summarize, here's what a Google Drive architecture should look like with all the recommended approach that we just discussed. We have a root folder called Acme Drive. We've got a flat folder structure that has taken away one level of the hierarchy to support for better searching. We've assigned role groups to top level folders. And what we've also done is made sure that nobody else apart from the admin is allowed to change the permissions on the top level folders. As to what level the hierarchy you lay out for your users, think of it as a shelf. And once you've built the shelf, you can allow them to fill it up. But what you want to do is ensure that you, the admin, is in control of that shelf. You are in control of the outer permissions. That's the goal, and that's the goal we're achieving. So once this root folder is created, then you need to deploy it to your end users. More importantly, you need to spend the time and resources on how to use it. A couple of really simple suggestions to get started is if you take the sharing link from Google Drive, um, the root folder, you can shorten it. Use something uh, within your org uh, or uh, goo.g, etc., cetera, uh, uh, bit.ly, uh, you, you, you can just get a nice, short, and easy URL that you can share and make that part of your onboarding process when new people join. Um, <clears throat> very easy. And this is key. Ensure that you're training all employees. Train them that they need to add the root folder to their My Drive for quick and easy access. And there are other reasons for this, too. And it directly relates to those of you who are... Um, you know, managing f email attachments and trying to put them into Google Drive or using other tools, et cetera, that are connected or integrated with Google Drive, a lot of the times it 
Google Drive only understands what's within your My Drive, uh, shared with me or recent. So sometimes what happens is you'll get a, if you don't add this root folder to your My Drive, you're not going to be able to have that quick and easy access to that folder structure. So it's just a very simple two to three click process, one time, and you're taken care of, okay? So what's next? Consider the following. The only way this formula works is if you are completely invested in the work that it entails. Understand the value of performing a full audit in order to properly document this new architecture. Educate leadership and colleagues on the implications of making such a switch and focus on the good because with Google, I really believe that it always outweighs the bad here. Advocate the importance. Look, you've made this investment and really not being able to optimize the experience is not going to help you and you need to train. You train, 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 train your team. Stop thinking that your organization already has a handle on using Google Drive. I'm sure they do, but providing training that shows them how to work and function within this new architecture, getting them accustomed to what, where, what they have access to, how they need to share, that's a very different approach and that's something that they need to be trained on so that it is crystal clear within the organization. And just to add a nugget here, if you do decide to go down this path and really utilize Google Drive as your file, um, uh, as your file surfer, really do cons give some consideration to Chrome devices. It's something that's really, uh, they are extremely inexpensive and easy to use um, and really, really um, a nice product to just be able to hand off. If the devices break, you don't have to worry about any data being lost. You simply log into another brand new Chrome device and you're up and running where you left off. Pretty interesting. <clears throat> actually, um, I have actually have a little Chrome box myself that I use and there it is. So hopefully you see what we see, right? And this is just a glimpse into how companies that look at Google's platform um, beyond Gmail and contacts and calendar uh, and truly as an enterprise ready solution, right? So we need to plan and I think that's probably the biggest part here is really understanding how to take into consideration everything that we talked about and being ready to truly invest and then spend the time and resources necessary to make this happen. So I think starting with your competitive advantage is, is a nice way to consider this. Um, and and what, we welcome the opportunity to actually work with you to understand how to make this a successful investment. If you'd like to work with us, as you can see here, this is just, an, uh, just a basic vision of how we would incorporate this. Um, actually, I like this. Uh, a little bit clear because it kind of gives you an idea that it's about a six week process, right? We have to work with you, understand you know what this architecture is going to look like, where the information is coming from, and start to work within your organization because we like to think about what your organization is going to look like today, um, also in what you're planning for several years down the road. And because some of these roles, even though you might have one person that represents an entire role, um, you want to be thinking about what, what does the future of your organization look like, how is it going to expand, etc. And this type of thinking is going to help architect and build out that solution. Of course, we're going to provide training and we're going to provide incredible documentation on really how to utilize this technology. Okay, And then we're also going to give you a workbook that you can rely on for the future uh, and that's very easy to hand and pass over to other uh, people that may assume the role uh, to manage this in the future. Here's another simple version of how it is working with us. So really what we do is we, we start to audit and work with you understanding how to do that. Then we like to discuss with your key players, the people within the organization that are going to, that this greatly impacts. Uncover any other project or support solutions where we can fill in those gaps. Um, upgrading to G Suite business or also known as drive for work on our Google Apps Unlimited is really something critical that we find if you're going to use Google Drive as your file server rather than having to manage storage individually. Um, and then of course training is something that we talked about before but we will provide that and we'll make you, uh, we'd love for to be your Google, uh, your G Suite partner if we can and we'd be able to help you on that regard. If you do want to have um, any type of access to our team, 
we also have a white paper that I'm showing you right here. I'm going to pay, go ahead and paste it in the chat uh, session right here and go to webinar. And there you go. You should have access to that report. Also, if you have any questions and you want to really are interested in this philosophy that we have and would like to get engaged in a project, email Kyle, kyle at profoundcloud.com and say you watch the webinar and you're really interested. And he'll get in touch with you right away and we can start talking about this. So I really appreciate everyone's time. I hope this was helpful and educational. Uh, we have had extremely positive results from using this methodology with clients. Um, again, we have this white paper there too, so if you feel like you can do this on your own, by all means do it. Uh, really at this point we're just more interested in encouraging this type of practice uh, for Google and we find it uh, to be very uh, helpful. So do take advantage of it and again if you'd like more help that's why we're here and uh, this is the kind of stuff we'd love to do. So. Hope everyone enjoyed this, and uh, I'll make sure everyone gets a copy of the recording. Thank you so much, and uh, have a great day.